Marriage requires sacrifice and changing your lifestyle. When you're old, it's going to be difficult. When you're 30 or 40, when you've lived according to a certain lifestyle and now you have to change it because of a person, this is going to be difficult. And I've seen from personal experience that a, many couples who got married at an old age for the first time and it led to divorce because they couldn't change their habits. They couldn't change their lifestyle. But when you get married, when you get married at an early age, when, when I say early, I'm not talking 11 or 12. At least, at least in the 20s. You can change your lifestyle. You can change your habits. You can attune yourself to the habits and the customs and the needs and the desires of your spouse. This is possible because you're still young. You haven't picked up dirty habits. You, ha you haven't picked up hard and old habits that are unchangeable. You can still change. Some might ask that, Sayyid, if you encourage getting married at a young age, let's say in your 20s, most of us are young. Most of us barely have jobs. Many of us are still going to schools and we, laugh of lo we have loans. Or if we work, we're not making that much money. How do you expect us to get married? We can barely support ourselves. You expect us to support someone else? Or no, even a family with kids? How? Let me ask you a question. A serious question. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lie? Answer this question. Does Allah lie? Allah, of course Allah does not lie. We say this. We believe in it. But practically, we say no, Allah lies. I know a lot of people, maybe with their tongues, they don't say Allah lies. But practically, they're accusing Allah of lying. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَأَنْكِحُوا الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ Let your youngsters, let the young, let the youth get married. Help them in getting married. And then, إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاء يُغْنِيهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلَهُ If they are poor, Allah will make them rich. Not just help them financially, but Allah will make them rich. يُغْنِيهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلَهُ Allah will help them. No, Allah is not lying. When you say that right now I can't afford marriage because I have a lot of loans, because I'm working, I can't afford it, you're basically telling Allah, God, you're a liar. You're lying to me. Is this right? Allah says, إِن يُغْنِيهُمْ إِن يَكُونُ فُقْرَاغِ يُغْنِيهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلَهُ Now, Allah doesn't say this regarding going to Hajj or buying a house or anything else. But He says this regarding marriage. Allah says, I will give. I will support. So why the lack of confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thus, we need to pay attention to this. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Here, there's a word to the parents. And play, parents play a major role in the issue of marriage. Why? Because I know a lot of couples, you know a lot of couples that wanted to get married, that had serious intentions of getting married, but the ones who were an obstacle to that marriage were whom? The parents. Many times. And a lot of times when I see that parents get involved and they become an obstacle in the face of this marriage, I always wish that there's a good excuse. Like faith, for example. Like the girl is not religious enough. Or the guy's not religious enough. I always wish that there's a good excuse. But there is always a stupid excuse. There's always a lame excuse. For example, a guy comes and he proposes to this father. He wants his daughter. But unfortunately, because he's not from Mintishbel, no. Or he's not from Tibnin. Or she's Lebanese, she has to be Iraqi, or she has, she's uh, Iraqi, she has to be Lebanese. This is silly. Do you know how many marriages, do you know how many marriages were wrecked because of this issue? Because of a racial divide? Because of a nationality issue? A lot of marriages were stopped. The father refused. Because she's not from our race. She's, she doesn't speak our language. She's not from our country. No, she's from our country, but she's not from our hometown. This is silly. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sets the criteria. He sets the criteria. He says that if someone comes and proposes to your daughter, just check for two things and that's it. Don't ask about anything else. Two things. If he has these two qualities, go ahead. And if he doesn't, no, stop. In جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ Two criteria. His faith and his manners. That's it. Not his hometown, not his city, not his country, not his language, not his bank account, not his color, not his education, none of this. These are the barriers that you and I put and our parents put. Not Rasulullah and not Islam. Islam says it's all about the faith and manners. If she has the faith and manners, go ahead. If he has the faith and manners, give him. Give him your daughter, if she accepts, of course. Give him. وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا Rasulullah continues. وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ And if you don't, there will be major corruption. There will be major corruption. And I've witnessed this firsthand. Unfortunately, this last October, I lost a very good friend in California. A wonderful person. A wonderful person who, who's religious. He works hard. I remember he used to work seven days a week. Seven days a week, a hard worker. And he was good looking. He wasn't terribly looking. But because he was from a spe specific country, he spoke, a, he spoke a specific language. He proposed once, he got rejected. He proposed twice, he got rejected. He posed three times, four times, five times, he got rejected. One day he said, you know what, enough is enough. No more rejections. After the final rejection, he drove his car, he came to a bridge in San Diego, he stood off that bridge and he jumped.